trust full surrender to divine providence. Nothing occurs by chance in the whole course of our lives is the unanimous teaching of the fathers and doctors of the church and God intervenes everywhere. Let us conclude then with St. Augustine, all that happens to us in this world against our will, whether due to men or to other causes, happens to us only by the will of God, by the disposal of His providence, by His orders and under His guidance. All evil actions must be attributed to God and to man in so far as they are natural physical acts. But they can be attributed only to the will of man in so far as they are sinful and blameworthy. God makes use of the evilness of men as the doctor does of leeches to draw impure blood out of a patient. Not one of them could act upon us unless the power were given from above. Let us never attribute our losses, our disappointments, our afflictions, our humiliations to the devil or to men, but to God as their real source. So let us be careful not to say, so and so is a cause of my misfortune. Your misfortunes are not the work of this or that person, but of God. You, God, treat us with the same circumspection as one who handles a vase of precious crystal or fragile pottery for fear of breaking it. A glove is not more fitted to a hand or a sword to a scabbard than what he does and ordains in us and for us is suited to our strength and capabilities so that everything may serve to our advantage and perfection if we but cooperate with the designs of his providence. There is no tribulation or temptation whose limits God has not appointed so as to serve not for our destruction but for our salvation. To remain indifferent to good fortune or to adversity by accepting it all from the hand of God without questioning. Not to ask for things to be done as we would like them but as God wishes to make the intention of all our prayers that God's will should be perfectly accomplished in ourselves and in all creatures is to find the secret of happiness and content. No harm befalls the just, Proverbs 12, 21, or disturbs the serenity of his mind. For if he has exactly what he wishes, he cannot be unhappy in spite of himself. But who can expect to have such happiness except the man whose will is entirely conformed to the will of God? This practice of conformity to his will is so pleasing to God that it often has a visible influence on the material things of life. The God of infinite goodness would not send such disasters unless some great good were to result from them. Let us therefore hasten to accept from his hand all that he sends us and as a result of our trustful surrender, he will either cause us to gain the greatest advantages from our misfortunes or else spare us from them altogether. Never be afraid of relying too much on him, but rather seek always to increase your trust more and more, for this is the most pleasing homage you can pay him, and it will be the measure of the graces you will receive. Let us firmly believe that if anything is necessary or really useful for us, our all-powerful Father will give it to us without fail. Our 
conformity to the will of god should extend to our natural defects mental ones include we should not for example complain or feel grieved at not being so clever or so witty or not having such a good memory as other people why should we complain of the little that has fallen to our lot when we have deserved nothing of the good that god has given us is not all a free gift of his generosity for which we are greatly indebted to him what services has he received from us that he should have made us a human being rather than some lower animal have we done anything to oblige him to give us existence itself the best disposition for a good death is submission to his will saint gertrude we ought to carry our conformity to god's will to the point of accepting our death we shall die on the day and at the hour and in the manner that god decides and it is this particular death that we should accept because it is the one most becoming of his glory in return for your trustful surrender to him he will either find someone to help you even better than before or he himself in his goodness will deign to be your guide let us realize this fact that prayer has no need of feeling in order to be of value it consists solely in the movement of the will towards god and by its nature this movement has nothing to do with feeling god's grace operates in us in the same way christ works hiddenly in our souls but the problem is we want to feel everything we ought to confirm to god's will in interior trials that is to say with all the difficulties met with in our spiritual life such as temptations scruples anxieties aridity desolation and so on as soon as he judges it the right moment to touch our mind our heart we shall be enlightened fortified or consoled david was ready to accept bad fortune as well as good disgrace as well as honor and was prepared for all that god willed let us to enter resolutely into the state of steadfastness which rejoices the heart of our heavenly father and will be the means of our sanctification the source of peace and joy in this world and the pledge of our eternal happiness in the next <laughs>